Vámonos. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tina. I'm one of your RLC leaders with Appalachian Allies RLC. Thank you for joining us today. As we wait for everyone to finish logging on, uh, we're going to ask that you please enter your name and county into the chat box so we have an idea of who's in the room for us. All right, so since it's just a couple minutes after nine, again, I am Christine McGill, but I go by Tina. Uh, Christine's just a little bit too formal for me. Um, while we wait for everyone to introduce themselves in the chat, I would like to acknowledge that we have some really incredible leaders in the room with us today. Uh, Sinasa is going to introduce herself later, but we have Cheryl and Kevin here today with us as well. And the four of us have been working on this event together. So um, Cheryl and Kevin will be helping us throughout the session to monitor the chat and such. But I want to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Cheryl Self. I am the Director of Youth Prevention for Comp Drug and Youth to Youth. I have been in the field of youth blood prevention professionally for 16 years, but I was a student involved in youth blood prevention um, starting in seventh grade. So it's in my DNA, it's in my blood. Um, I love it. I have a passion for this type of work and um, I'm really excited that I get to work with awesome people like Tina and Sunessa, as well as many of you on the call. And I can see some familiar names and faces. Um, hi, Mary. Um, all right, I'll pass it over to Kevin. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Rigby. I am the manager of youth prevention for youth to youth I have been uh, working for youth to youth and in, the, in youth led prevention for the past 15 years. Like Cheryl, I grew up as a young person in our program here in Central Ohio. And um, that was a long, a long time ago, and I've loved it ever since. I get to work with our uh, local youth-led program here uh, called The Pulse, and uh, get to help our students uh, create and do workshops and camps and run conferences and all that fun stuff. So I'm excited to uh, be a part of this today and always a good good even refresher for me and I, I find to always learn new things uh, at every one of these trainings uh, so I'm excited to meet you all and connect all right thank you Cheryl and Kevin I uh, again I'm Tina I'm with Appalachian Allies RLC um, compared to Kevin Cheryl and some of the other amazing leaders in this room um, Sinesa and I aren't as, um, you know, experienced in the game, but we love it and um, we are very excited about today. Welcome to our very first 
statewide RLC. And these meetings, just as a reminder, are meant to serve as a dialogue between adult professionals who work in youth development or youth led prevention. One thing that we like to reiterate with anything that we do is that this is really a learning community. We're welcoming discussion so we can learn from one another because, you know, one thing that a professor said to me once was, um, you all are brilliant, but you're infinitely ignorant as well. And the thing with that is that we're all lifelong learners and that's how we grow. So we're gonna get started with a little icebreaker. And in a moment, Ashley is going to include a link to Pull Everywhere in the chat box. So if you are unfamiliar with Pull Everywhere, it is a resource you can use for virtual or in-person engagements. It is a free app and it features graphs, word clouds, and of course, polls amongst other things. So what she'll do is she'll have that link in the chat box. She's already done that. And I just ask that you please click the link and it should prompt you to give a screen name. This can be any name that you choose because it is anonymous. It's not gonna show your name if you don't choose it to. Okay, and once you've accessed that page, I ask that you type in uh, your name and think about an adult who has positively impacted you within your youth, okay? Just think of that person, and then I want you to write down one word that that adult made you feel. Examples might be safe, supported, loved, seen, valued, any of those things or other ones. And then after you enter in that word, please return to the Zoom meeting and we're gonna watch as people enter their information here. Can you see that, Dina? Yes, thank you. Wow, okay, so seen, loved, important, validated. And included, confident, challenged, heard. Ooh, cherished. Self-accepting, appreciated, accountable, heard, yes. Loving all of these. I love watching it get bigger. And yeah. <laughs> so we're seeing that a lot of people are, you know, that the theme might be loved, valued, heard, all of that. Um, thank you all for sharing with that. This is just one activity that you can use to get to know your youth led groups. Um, and with these, you can feel free to change the language so that it's more relatable to you or your young people. And of course, we want to make sure that we are still authentic with that. Um, I know it's not, not the most eloquent thing to, to say, but sometimes, you know, I may ask students or my youth led, like, well, it really sucks right now, you know? No, <laughs> maybe some, some people wouldn't choose to, to use words like that, but that feels authentic to me. Um, now, if you have any icebreakers that you wanna share, please feel free to share those out in the chat box as well. Another thing that you can use is a spinoff of two truths, one lie, um, but we like to call it true truths, two truths and one wish. Basically, that's when each person will tell two truths and one wish, and the other people in the group have to figure out which one is the wish, right? So an example might be, I might say that I have a very diverse family. Um, I have Black, Puerto Rican, Finnish, Indian, Hungarian family members. I've lived in Spain for a semester, or I have swam with whale sharks in the wild. So my one wish is that I have swam with whale sharks. I would love to do that one day. With these activities, you can ask open-ended questions of participants to really gain insight into their lives, their values, et cetera. Now, some people might think that these icebreaker activities 
are like that fluff and that they don't matter, but it's actually helpful because it gives young people an opportunity to share their experiences. Well, not just getting to know their peers, but also getting to know you as well. Hopefully you'll you know, take part in those. Depending on the level of familiarity in the group, um, your icebreakers might change. Nevertheless, it is important to consistently create a safe space that our young people can feel uh, seen and heard. And as you continue to use these uh, get to know you activities, a deeper connection is created and your young people will start to feel like they really belong. Now we're gonna expand more on this topic of belonging and how it ties into the Youth Empowerment Conceptual Framework or YCF. And at that, I'm going to turn it over to my amazing friend, Sanessa. Thank you, Tina. Um, in, in true full moon fashion, I just lost my cursor and can't do anything on my screen for some reason. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sanessa Tolley. Um, I live in Monroe County, Ohio. A lot of people do not know where that is. Um, that's because we're an hour from everywhere. There's no interstate or hospital where I live. Um, and we do have the largest uh, school district geographically in the state of Ohio. So we're quite spread out and quite rural. Um, yeah, I have no cursor. How about that? Um, so as Tina mentioned, I we are new to this sort of. This is my third year um, in youth-led prevention. And it gets more and more exciting every moment, honestly. Um, but yet at the same time, we're always coming back to the foundation, right? And that part is so important, no matter how many years you've been in this, we have to keep coming back to that foundation. And the foundation is the YECF. I'm going to attempt to share screen. Good thing I have a touch screen since I lost my cursor. Um, let's see, there we go. So let's dive into this thing called the Holden model or the Youth Empowerment Conceptual Framework. Now, when you see the YCF, this is what, or when, when you, people say that, this is what we're talking about. Um, and let me say that I know that this is intimidating. Flowcharts literally make my head hurt. However, it is important to understand that this is the foundation on which everything is built. And the YCF is the plan for building and growing your group. Building a strong group that can work together is imperative to affecting change with the SPIF or the Strategic Prevention Framework. Today, we will focus on the group climate portion of the YECF and dig into the group cohesion piece of the puzzle. Icebreaker activities, whether virtual or in person, are important in building group cohesion, which affects the rest of the group climate pieces, which are group resiliency, collective efficacy, and outcome efficacy. When we talk about group cohesion, I'm gonna to try to stop. There we go. Okay. When we talk about group cohesion, we're really talking about a sense of belonging. I want you to take a moment and think about a time when you felt like you did not belong. Um, this might not be comfortable. <laughs> were you a child or an adult? Uh, was it a cultural belonging? Was it a small group setting? Did other, did other people intentionally make you feel that way? Was it self-imposed? Was it due to communication breakdown? Like I told you, I've lived in the same county my whole life. Um, so there's been plenty of times that I did, felt like I didn't belong, even though I know all these people and they all know me. So it's not a cultural thing because I'm as Appalachian as you can get. But when it comes to communication styles, love languages, I often find myself on the outside looking in. So that leads me to questioning my worth, especially in my career. And that has happened to me repeatedly over my 40 years. My reason for asking you to reflect on this is because if we want adults to develop, build developmental relationships with, with and among youth, we need to also attend to the relationships among the adults. So to get us started slowly and hopefully comfortably, we're gonna go into breakout rooms and I want you to discuss what is a time that you felt like you did not belong? And Ashley is going to get us into our breakout rooms and we will see you back in just a few minutes.
we got everybody back? There we go. Okay. So I think it's safe to say that if we're honest and vulnerable, we've all had situations that continue to impact our adult lives that started with not belonging. For some of us, it might be harder to think of times when we did belong and how that helped us through our journey. Building group cohesion in our youth-led groups leads them to learning how to foster belonging for themselves and others across the continuum of a lifetime. Today, it's their youth-led group, but tomorrow it's their sports team. Next year, it's a fraternity. After that, it's work peers at a staff meeting, their city council, the country, and God willing, the world, right? This really is fostering cultural change. Just because it's on a micro level doesn't mean that it's not having a macro impact. So this time we're gonna all stay together and we're gonna share some, some activities, events, things that you saw or were involved in that helped foster relationships in your work with young people. You are welcome to speak out. Um, you are welcome to put it in the chat, but we're just looking for what activities and events helped foster relationships in your work with young people. Hi, um, so my name is Rachel. Um, my, my passion for working with kids has come from being a person living in recovery and um, no one really ever reached out to me when I was a kid about, you know, things that were going on in my life. And I just, I want to be that person for, for the kids that are in my life. So. Amen. I think that every day, I just want to be the person that I needed right? Lisa, I see that you raised your hand. Did you have something to contribute? Yeah, I, I didn't want to talk over anybody else. Um, so um, this summer, we were in a program with the schools, and um, the we, we were teaching a program, and the kids were at desks, and it was what I did during, during quite time, or when I wasn't the lead teacher at the time, I would go to eat, to individual desks, and get down on their level and speak to them very, um, very honestly, um, very caring. Um, it was about like kind of careers and what they want to want to want to do. And I would talk to them about it and encourage them about it. And I would try and say, okay, if this is what you're interested in, there's tons of careers in that. Um, you know, there's somebody was interested in sign language. And so I was able to say, you know, there's not just sign language, you could go into speech pathology, you could go into speech and hearing. I said, you can do all of these wonderful things. And I was able to provide her with, um, you know, the name of a person who was in that field. But I, I just got down to them and talked to them. And the other thing that I did is one of the first things that I said is, I am here because I want you to be, and, and it was with all females, I want you to be powerful and independent and successful. And um, uh, there were four words that I used, but powerful, or successful, independent, resilient. And um, uh, there was a word that I used that was for um, being able to um, rely only on yourself. Like, and I gave the example, I've been married for 25 years, but I'd be okay with or without my husband. I love him and I want him in my life, but I can function as an individual. I can function by myself. I can take care of myself. Same. So, and I, I wanted to express that there's a big difference between wanting somebody in your life and needing somebody in your life. So those were like, I guess, kind of three different things that I really tried to emphasize, but I think getting down to their level and I'm sure, so it, was, it wasn't that hard for me to get down that low, but I think that was really helpful. Yeah, yeah. And even, and I think that's kind of what Tina was pointing out too when she was talking about the language that we use. We also use the language to get down to their level, right? To meet them where they're at. Um, and I kind of am really thankful that I don't work with little kids. I work with teenagers, so that's pretty easy for me. <laughs> um, Lisa, I see that you had... No, not Lisa. Who else had their, I saw, I thought I saw another hand raised. Where did that go? 
I, I lowered it. Um, hi, everybody. Oh, uh, Ashley. Um, and, and I would say, you know, embracing all of the things that we just talked about in our breakout rooms, I think has made me relate with youth the most kind of going in and allowing yourself to be the oddball and to be vulnerable. Don't go in like the expert, um, dress more like the kids um, admit that you don't know, like, I'm always like, guys, I'm not cool. And I need you to teach me how to be cool because I'm like, I'm old and I've never been cool. And you have to help me learn. And, um, they always want to, to try to do that. Um, I think we're always so afraid of TikTok, but saying, Hey guys, like, I don't know TikTok and I hear this is the thing. Can you show me how to do a TikTok dance? And of course they're going to be all over that in five seconds. Um, because a, you knew what that social media platform was and B, you said you wanted to act a fool in front of them. So they like you. Right. Um, and yeah, so in, in every group, whether it's with three or, or with third graders or, or, you know, all the way up, I automatically kind of just admit my own vulnerabilities up front and then say, you know, Hey, I want you to teach me, you know, just as much as I'm hoping that I can teach you because you have, you know, you have your stories and sometimes I'll talk about my stories when it's, you know, appropriate and when it fits and show how we're all more similar than we are different. Um, and, and finding those commonalities. And I think that by doing that, you, you automatically get more respect because you're coming at it from a, I respect you because you're here. I don't expect you to respect me until you learn to trust me. Amen. Um, and I think that's a big mistake that adults make when working with young people, especially with high risk, is we go in demanding respect and we can't do that. We yes. can't. Like they, yes. they have to trust us first. So we yeah. have to allow vulnerability to, to earn trust. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I work in, a, in high schools and you wouldn't believe how many times teachers are like, how'd you do that? Well, because I didn't talk to them like I'm better than them. That's why. <laughs> right. Um, I'll, I just, I want to share one real quick that um, just happened the other day. Uh, I was talking with some of the youth in my group um, and they'd been working on, a, they'd been working with me on youth led prevention for a couple years now. And we were expressing our disappointment about the, we are the majority rally being in being virtual again, like, sorry, it's disappointing. Sorry, Juliana, but they were discussing the things that they really enjoyed about the watch party that we had last year. And their observation, the thing that they brought to my attention was in their words that members who did not participate in the watch party that we did last year were less active in the group this year in comparison to the ones who were there. And they felt that those who attended had grown closer. And I can totally agree with that. That's what happened. You know, there's a core group of them that participate and they're there for everything. And then the other ones like have sort of fallen away or they only come whenever it's convenient. And so it matters. So when we're thinking, when you guys are thinking, wah, wah, you know, it's virtual again, man, don't be afraid to throw those watch parties together because it is a group building activity. Um, um, so ahead. Ahead. Before we move on, uh, Kathleen threw out in the chat that, um, you know, a lot of these activities are great, but I know they're terrifying or overwhelming for introverted or shy youth. What are some activities that might be more comfortable for introverts? Does anyone have any ideas that they like to share for uh, people who are a little bit more introspective? So one of the activities that I was going to share, it's what it's one I start every one of my teams anytime I'm working with young people is called All Someone. And so you have kids with a note card and the first thing you have them write is one thing that they think that applies to 100% of the group. And so that really, should, that will, and then they turn it in. So at the end, they're gonna turn this card into you. The second thing is something that they think that half of the group is gonna have in common. So usually like those this or that questions, cats or dogs, you can get really creative with it. And then the last thing is something that they think is totally unique to them. And just, I will tell them as specific as you can go, like one kid who mentioned that she had, she was doing a mission trip in South America and like 
had this wild story that went with it. But because they're writing it on a piece of paper, they're not, they don't have to get up and they don't have to share it out loud that they're turning it into you. And so then everyone will stand and you will read these. So everyone will stand. And if it does not apply to the, a kid or doesn't apply to you, I always participate of course too, they sit. And that, at that point they're out. And so you can see what you have in common. The next thing, 50% more kids are gonna sit. The last thing it should, in theory, one kid should be left standing. And so they don't have to share that story. They are, as like you've already kind of said it, they just stand, they use like acknowledge and give them the space if they do want to talk about it. And then everybody sits and then they, or everybody stands again and it starts over. It is, I really love that activity. I've got some really good feedback from kids. I love that. And I can't wait to do that with my small group. <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah, I I saw the um, your comment in the chat, and I was hoping that you would share. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Again, that's a great things soft that aren't intro. unique. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Go ahead. Um, do you ever get things that aren't unique? Like they think it's unique to them, and it's not. Does that happen a lot? Yeah. So sometimes they'll they aren't specific enough. And so if the kid might say, like, I play this particular instrument, but you might have a bunch of kids who are in band together. And so it, it depends. One of my, the, the, usually the first ones are, I go to this school, but I encourage them to try to really think outside the box for that one. And so some of them will be like, we all have seen a McDonald's before. We, have, we all know what a dog sounds like. So it's, it's really funny how you go about that. Um, but yeah, you'll have that and they can say, oh, okay. And then you might ask them, how might you specify this, that it's just you? What do, what do you feel? And then really have them think about what makes them unique. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for being willing to share um, and help each other out with that. Um, so the next question that we would like to do is what barriers have you faced with guiding your group in finding connection? We would like you to share that in the chat. We're going to do a waterfall. So type your answer. Don't hit enter yet. Oh, sorry. I didn't give the instructions. Well, I apologize. Type your answer. Don't hit enter yet. What barriers have you faced with guiding your group in finding connection? I can see some people still typing. That's okay. Type, type, type. And go ahead and hit enter. Yes. Behavior issues. Time. Time is my enemy. Attendance. Yep. So I'd like to ask our RLC leaders that are in the room if they could please speak up. Are there any of these obstacles that you have faced and how did you overcome it? What advice do you have? That's a tough one. Uh, but I, I would say we always, every single group, we we got what I, I think the biggest mistake we met made in not getting cohesion and, and with all the barriers that were up was we never took enough time to do group cohesion activities. We never took enough time to let them develop their own relationships. And part of it is the kids, they wanna do things. They're so excited somebody's listening to them uh, and we just go too fast all the time. So, so I think that's the biggest thing. So we instituted every single day we start with some kind of group cohesion activities, not just a fun activity, something where they get to connect with each other. Yes. And sometimes the only thing you can do is that group cohesion activity and you don't move on to any content. So you have to make room for it, but we get this limited amount of time given to us and we feel like we have to cram it all into that 45 minute window. And so, you know what, if you spend 45 minutes on group cohesion and the next time you get together, you dive deeper, so be it. But Skipping that group cohesion is a big mistake. Anybody else? Beth put, 
Sorry, uh, that's playing okay. with purpose. That's I was wanting you to expand on that if you would please. Oh. So I always think about when we when we play, when we do team building, just like Karen alluded to, have an intention as an adult behind where you want what what you want them to have the aha moment. Um, so it's not just a random let's play a game, but just like Megan's example of all some and none, it helps those kids make the connections. It helps them recognize that they they may not whatever issue they're experiencing that they're sharing is their unique thing actually may not be as unique. And that can be both good and bad. And the fact that they may find other people who are struggling with that same issue. I always want to make sure we're real intentional and in playing with purpose. Um, we have a school-based um, program, youth-led prevention program. And whenever the facilitator comes to me and says, okay, we're struggling. My number one answer is, okay, let's take a, take a time and just take the entire next session and, and play with purpose. And it's always like, but but we have to do, and I know I'm, I know you have that pressure because we need to move through the strategic prevention framework, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to do that until you bring that group back together. Maybe they weren't connected from the get-go or maybe they just run into a challenge within their own school uh, climate that has caused them to kind of disconnect from each other. So that's always the answer that I give um, our staff is go back to that playing with purpose. And I think you'll kind of reset the group through that group cohesion and help move them forward. Play with purpose. I absolutely love that. I had to write it down. <laughs> Great. Anybody else? Well, here's what we're going to do. Okay. Our, our last and final question. And this is open for everybody. So just raise your hand, speak out, whatever. Please share with us a time that you saw group cohesion fall apart in a time when you, or a time when you saw its success, any advice that you'd like to give for those, those of us who are starting out, who are new to the game? Anytime you saw group cohesion fall apart, even though you had this well-intended plan, or a time that you saw its success? Uh, I, I just have a, the silliest one for first us is we had our um, countywide group. So they meet in the evening, you know, six to eight. It's a long time, you know, to me, they've already been to school and um, they're called YAC, Youth Advisory Council. And it was a holiday. I forget what holiday coming up. And they said, hey, can we bring snacks? So they ended up and they were not getting along. It was like two different groups of kids. They decided to do yak snack attack, they called it. And they, they had a theme and they, they just connected over the silliest thing. And they started assigning people a cool thing to bring that would fit into yak snack attack. And then, then they even started to get donations. Like they wanted to make it huge. Wouldn't that be cool? It made it a really huge thing. And they went to local businesses and said, can you donate the pizza? And they did it together by where they lived which is not how the group was divided before. Like, hey, I know this pizza place, can you come with me? Silliest thing in the world. And that was just one of the coolest connections because that group was definitely divided over food. You know, they got together. Well, you know, I can connect with anybody over food. I can, I can get on board with that. <laughs> anybody else? Haley shared in the chat, my biggest word is consistency. The groups that we've seen stick together are those that we were intentional to meet with on a consistent basis, and they knew they could depend on a certain time. That's yes. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will admit I run into consistency barriers with my group. Um, being a school-based group uh, in a very rural area, they my administration isn't very likely to let my kids out of class very often. Um, and because I have everyone from freshmen through juniors this year, like their, their, their classes don't line up. So it's not like I can do it during lunch. They, they're not all there. Right. And it becomes a barrier. And then my principal will say, we'll have the meetings after school. They're in sports. They don't drive, whatever. Like, seriously, you don't understand my problem here. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's that consistency is a constant struggle for, for my group. Um, but we're working on it, man. We try to do things. We have a Google classroom. So we try to connect there anytime, all day, every day, people can have access to that so they can share ideas and communicate that way. 
And that's kind of the thing through COVID that we've fallen back on um, to get us through different restrictions of, of time and consistency. Anything else, Tina? Yeah, I was just thinking about our youth summit um, mm -hmm. when we did the rock wall. I mean, we had groups from all over Appalachia and we had a rock climbing um, facility. These youth came together to really help each other out. Some of these obstacles, I wouldn't even dare try, but they were there, you know, cheering each other on saying, just do this or try this. And it was amazing and, and just awesome to see how they work together to complete some of those different obstacles. Yeah. And like, I'm scared to death, but I was doing it and they were cheering me on, which was amazing. We had a blast. If you ever have the opportunity to take your youth to a rock climbing something, pr I promise you it's a blast and they're going to love it. Um, thank you for bringing that up, Tina. I hadn't even considered that. Well, I just want to say thank you to everybody for sharing and being vulnerable and speaking up. Um, this has been some really great discussion. The bottom line is there's no cookie cutter way to build group cohesion, and it has many layers to it. Anybody a Shrek fan? Shrek has layers, just like an onion. Um, so don't be tempted to skip over the fluff because group cohesion is the strong roots of a successful youth-led organization, and it definitely does not happen overnight. If you're looking for ideas that um, just random things, a simple Google search of building group cohesion with teens or whatever your age group is, will pull up a multitude of activities. I've done it many times when I've been desperate for something new. Um, in our group, uh, the youth-led group I facilitate um, called Monroe Rising, they uh, we have several 4-H members, FFA members, scouts. Lean on those kids because they know things to do that are fun. They, they're more likely to step out of their comfort zone and lead a song or something silly to get people loosened up. Um, they have all kinds of experience to bring to the table for how to get their peers excited. Um, you have plenty of wiggle room to find the right activities to match the growth of your group. At some point, it will be need to be superficial things about what they like or don't like, right? That's, that's early on. Um, that, or as you add new people, you might go back to something more, more superficial, then as they, as the other, I'm sorry, <laughs> then at other points, um, you'll dive deeper and you'll play with purpose. Like Beth said, um, such as sharing each other's struggles and fears, this builds empathy that breeds understanding. And that results in a group that can work together, not just despite their differences, but because they're in a room at the, they're in, there is a room, I should say at the table for them all. So when you teach them how to run the spiff, they believe in their ability as a group and carry that load together. Um, I just wanna say thank you really to everybody. Um, I'm gonna kind of give it back over to Tina to wrap us up, but this has been better than I could have ever imagined. <laughs> And Tina, Thank just you. before you go, I just wanted to chime in. I think there's been some <clears throat> questions in the chat just about kind of capturing some of these ideas. And I think what we're going to do is try to, there were so many great ideas put in the chat. We're going to try to capture these and, and be able to send out and share um, with those of you who have, uh, who have been part of this. So um, stay tuned for us to be able to do that. But that was just something that we were kind of talking about on the side. And I wanted to make sure to let people know. Yes, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Well, like Sanessa and Cheryl were saying, thank you all for today's discussions. Um, we will have some resources available on the website, the Ohio Adult Allies was website. Um, now, when Sanessa and I were planning this meeting, I ended up sharing a very personal story and we agreed that it was pretty relevant to the discussion today. And most of you, because I, I'm seeing lots of familiar faces, don't know me, and I'm gonna give a little bit of, my, of myself within this. So Wendy, a friend of ours, and I were at a conference some time ago, and the speaker was asking us to discuss some questions about ourselves. Now, I don't really remember the full context of this conversation, but I do remember Wendy saying that I was a transplant 
And while I knew that, it was just this little reminder um, when you guys see like squirming um, that I was this outsider. You see, I've been a transplant for most of my life. Um, I was born in Florida. I moved to Kentucky when I was in the third grade. After moving several states away from pretty much everyone I knew, I tried to build new friendships. And between third grade and high school graduation, I moved four times, which meant three different elementary schools for me. After high school, I moved to Ohio for college. I uh, spent a semester in Spain. Then I graduated a year after returning to the States. Um, I moved to Florida for a year, only to move back to Kentucky, but to a different city because of some issues with grad school. And about two years after that, I moved to Cincinnati and then finally to West Virginia about a year after that. Now, my friend always told me that I embodied um, Shakira's Gypsy song. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. This particular friend had lived in the same house that her great great grandparents had lived in and passed down through her family. And she used to talk about how these fields were her home. But for me, and I get kind of choked up thinking about it, I didn't have roots. I just did my best to grow wherever I was moved. Now, that's not to say that I haven't made friends along the way, and I'm grateful for everyone that I've met, yet it never really felt like I truly belonged, except for maybe like in the general sense. Um, you know, that's anywhere close to the ocean. I'm not a mountain mama. You know, my, the sea has my soul. And for most of my life, I've always felt like I was just outside of that circle. The point of all of this is to say that a sense of belonging goes a little bit further than you might believe. We may know of a lot of young people who are transient, while some may have lived in one place their whole lives. And both groups may still feel disconnected at some point. That sticks with someone. It doesn't matter if you're 15, 30, or 65. Not feeling like you belong can make you question if you're seen or understood, why you're in a space and doubt if you have anything to really contribute. One of our goals as adult allies is to be just that, an ally, and to give our young people a space where they know that they belong, even if it's just for that little snippet during their day. The hope is that they carry that with them when they leave us so they can continue to shape the world around them. Now, you're probably wondering how all this kind of links together, right? When I used to teach in the classroom, I would teach some social emotional learning and we would say that empathy is compassion put into action. The YCF is a theory, right? But how you build your group is you putting youth empowerment into action. The SPIF is just that next step to help them put all of their ideas for change into a really formalized plan. But you can't get to the planning until they feel like they belong and that they believe in their capacity to become the change agents that they were born to be. Now, thank you all for listening. And I hope that you found value within our discussions today. The next session will take place on April 8th, and it's going to focus on the SPIF, but I'm going to let Sean give you a little snippet of that really quick before we close out. Sean? Thanks, Tina, and good morning, everybody. Right, so the two foundational tools, if you're new to youth-led programs in Ohio, so today we really looked at the YACF. Uh, next month, uh, we'll be looking at the SPIF, the Strategic Prevention Framework. And so myself, along with Beth and Robin uh, from the Northwest, I'm in the Southwest uh, Regional Learning. So we secure the border from Indiana uh, and Ohio and uh, all along the Western side. But really what we're gonna be looking at next month is talking about how do we work with our young people? So I think the idea Beth shared earlier today was around play with purpose. And so I think sometimes that idea of like, we have these either grant deliverables or expectations from school or funders or other stakeholders but how can we get our young people? And sometimes it is about stepping back and thinking about the relationships before just plowing forward with work. So I think we're gonna look at really how can we as adults show up best to support our young people. So that'll be uh, April 8th. And I think the link is gonna be uh, in the chat. And then also uh, you can sign up online to get, uh, or 
more information. I would say also check out, I think it was already put in the chat, but check out your regional learning collaborative meetings that we have meetings all throughout the state. A lot of them are virtual, so you can attend them from anywhere in the state, but those are really great places to get more targeted resources. I saw several people saying, I'd love some breakout or some resource icebreaker, you know, tools and things. So those are really uh, great. So check out those regional learning meetings that are on the Ohio.allies website. Thank you, Sean. Um, we have some links in the chat for you all to make that helpful. If you want any more information, resources, and whether it be for your regional learning collaboratives or um, some other things, you can check out the Ohio Adult Allies website under who we are tab, that's specifically for those RLCs in your areas. But I think that is all for us. Ashley is going to enter the evaluation link in the chat. Thank you all so much for today and we wish you well.